problems to, to be outraged about. For instance, usually the Republican Party is very strong on patriotism and defending America. You haven't seen Republicans, though, speaking out about the whole Russian thing as much. Usually Republicans I think are... the Russian thing is just, it's, there's nothing there. They've been mm. going for nine months. So, and they haven't found one thing. You don't think Russia Donald interfered? Trump in, you don't think Russia interfered in the to, elections at all? Donald Trump even said to Comey, "said Good, go after it. I want to find out if any of the satellites or any people in my administration were involved in something like that." He encouraged them to go after it. Um, besides hacking into and and even. Um, uh, Julian Assange with WikiLeaks says it's not the Russian government. Okay, that's not where I leak those things from. So, so, that, so, so there you I can think, kind of see the difference. I think different that's conversations, just, different conversations. It's, so, same it's facts, a different conversation. But different, different interpretations. But then, so then, um, I maybe the Russian thing isn't isn't something that we see the same way. But there is this idea of kind of respect for American institutions, respect for the Constitution protocol, those things. Usually conservatives stick up for that stuff. Yes. How do you make sense of that? And I mean, Because you could imagine that going down a road where you start eroding some of these institutions, you start eroding some of these norms, we could wind up in a situation that uh, where democracy begins to fail and falter. And you guys have been the people who have been the most concerned about democracy failing yeah. and falter. Right. We don't really hear that that much. So when she says it, you say you, you feel that she's insulting. But doesn't she have a point that you could need to respond to, though? It, you know, take the other thing out of it. Just concern for democratic institutions and our traditions. Mm. Is that something you would usually be defending and sticking up for? Well, I'm not defending anybody. Okay. okay? I can only speak my views. Um, no, I, you know, I grew up in a different America. I grew up in America where um, the government wasn't involved in every aspect of our life. Mm. Okay. Uh, that has changed over my lifetime, big time. Um, and I'm not a fan. The government is not a religion to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, the government. Yeah, let, me, let me ask you just one, just one question. They have that. 18 enumerated powers, and I would like them to stick with those. So, so when you when you say that, let me tell you how how I hear it. Or to me, right. my, I'm a ninth generation American. I am the first one in my family, though, that was born with all my rights recognized by the government. My father was born in 1944. You say the government wasn't always in our lives. Thank you. The government was all in my dad's life and my mother's life because of segregation. And by law, um, my mother was born under segregation. My father was born under segregation back nine generations. And they were married under segregation. And my cousin Kenya was born under segregation. I'm literally the first person in my family in nine generations no, no, born. No, not only that, listen, when you, were, but, but, but Kayla, when you were born and when you were growing up, I mean, which is, I, I think it's so poignant. I think today is so poignant. Today is Pride Day, right? A month, a Pride Month, a month that this White House has not even recognized, which is very offensive to me, and I'm not even gay. I like men a lot. But to, and tomorrow, Show in us. the East Coast, <laughs> I agree. I agree. To, and tomorrow, and I tomorrow, agree with right, that. I tomorrow agree is with the that. 50th anniversary of the Loving Case, right? Mm -hmm. 50 yeah. years ago, just 50 years ago, Amen. it would have been illegal for Van to marry his wife. Wow. And it certainly would have been wow. illegal, you know, for, for gay people to wow. be married. So when you say that government, that you grew up in an America where government wasn't in your life, yeah, they were. Not as much as they are today. I don't know. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I. I don't know that a gay person that? that can get yeah, married today. Me. Is that, that wrong in thinking that? Um, I, I guess what, what when we when we try to we're trying to talk across these big gap chasms. Yeah, I totally agree. May, may I, I'm so sorry. Listen. I think maybe we didn't get to recognize it as much because we're white, and it was a little bit a lot a lot easier. So we didn't have to face it all the time. And now that we are here and diverse and everybody has a seat at the table, I think we have to create a space to listen to those people that have had different struggles, you know, that are, you know, not as privileged as us. Um, and I think it's just, I think we have to kind of face that fact that maybe it wasn't in our lives because we just were privileged. It's totally it's true. I mean, it's, it's totally, and you were Christian as well. You know what I mean? So you were white and Christian. So like you're aligning with the base of this country. But I, I feel like there's there's an understanding that says like if someone doesn't agree with you, 
it may come from the fact that they have had a completely different experience. I totally agree. You have had a... I have had nothing of similarity to your experience in this country. Literally nothing. And so when... Like, for me, it's an insult to me that you don't want to speak because you're not... You're not li- you're not but listening to what I'm saying. You spoke but, because but, you were urged to and given a floor to. But, 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 but and she, she spoke. She spoke, but she didn't want to. She okay. was urged. That's what I'm saying. Awesome. So what I'm saying is that all of us here have had such unique experiences and just are from such different backgrounds that we have to like. If this is a, a conversation about having conversations, then we have to be listening to each other and listening to the fact that like the reason I am so passionate and I'm not hostile. I'm passionate. The reason I am so passionate is because I've had such a different experience in this country than you. Because as a black woman, the government is so much in my life. And it always has been. Like, the government literally said that black men couldn't even be in the house or else women could not get welfare. And that's a big reason why there's such a chasm between black women and black men in this generation. So I think that there's just a lot to understand for, like, why people are talking the way they're talking about different things. I understand why you're talking the way you're talking. Because I know... because well, I, I just don't understand what am I talking? I just said I believe in this country. Yes. And you, you can say that in a way that I cannot. Because you've had a different experience. Because this country is here for you. This country ain't here for me in the same way, sis. Uh, it isn't. And you, as a trans person, have to also identify the fact that this country hasn't been here for trans until, like, maybe 2 o'clock today. <laughs> so that's a constant. That's a constant I do think this thing. is something. I totally agree in the sense that I certainly grew up different than a lot of people. Uh, but I, you think that I, I didn't have any... I had so many... No, I'm not saying you didn't so have any issues. So many issues. And but, your issues but your issues may not have come from the, the well, position I, I that you have in America. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country fleeing communism. And so it gives me like a pixie dust starry eye.